quick disclaimer and everything. So next we're going to go over to what should be a still quite similar hard drive, uh, but only it's using IDE interface uh, with the older Molex power connector and master slave jumpers and so on. But it's the same manufacturer, so we can see how things changed over just uh, a brief course of years. Quite interestingly, I seem to have no trouble using uh, Torx 7 as well. As you can tell, I've previously opened this, so possibly it was in my previous video or some other reason I've opened this hard drive. Um, and of course, I did the horrible thing of not marking the side of the drive as to what this is from, so I have no idea what this was originally for, but being IDE and 500 gigs, it would be quite an interesting stretch for which computer of mine it would have been, so. All right, that came off relatively easily because of course I've already been in this drive, so all the screws were easy to find. And just need to get a some sort of spudger or screwdriver tool just to lift off the top part. You know, easier said than done there. All right, that's almost like glue. Nope, that's still the same material I'm used to. Hi, you can see me again. Yep, I'm out of focus because it's actually managing to focus on there. I'm trick it into focusing onto me. Um, I don't think it will. I think there's too much stuff that it wants to focus on. Oh, of course, adding my hands is just going to make it more focus on that anyway. So this looks virtually identical to the previous. I mean, the only real difference is probably gonna be the driver board. Quite incredible that, oh, and this piece is metal. So they changed that to plastic later on. Uh, you know, so, what if the year is very similar? They're just different drive interfaces. Well, the stickers are quite changed and the branding's changed. Uh, of course, if this is OEM and this is aftermarket, that might be another reason. Let's check the years here, 2008 of course, and the other one is 2007. Uh, yeah, so they're only about a year apart. So I bet main, the main changes can be the drive interface uh, and the fact that this is metal for some odd reason. For this one, I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the screws. Use, switching back to our 7 here. Go ahead and remove all the screws first off and then we'll just pop things out as we go. Again, we're going to destroy the drive here. And again, remember these head assembly is incredibly sharp. I'd recommend that if you're, I don't think I'll be able to lift the, the head into place here. If you're starting out, I'd recommend not touching anywhere on this actual actuator arm because it's such thin metal on the side, on the tips, just everywhere that it'll slice you if you're not being careful. And again, you should be doing this at your own risk and everything. I do not recommend taking drives apart unless you fully expect on slicing yourself and breaking a bunch of things and everything. Just like all the good teardowns go, right? Quite weird how I can't force that over. Could be why the drive's dead. Maybe the heads are stuck. There's actually three platters in this one, so there's a the difference. Oh, see, I had, uh, yeah, either because I started this too early or so on, these heads are now stuck together and they cannot physically be forced over, so the risks that we take, right? Take out this pin here, that pops over, and now you can do a platter swap. So if you were doing a, a platter swap, first off you would not take out any of those screws. You would simply remove that one bumper, that would pop over, and you could then attempt to remove the platter. It would be interesting at one point to uh, acquire some old working drives to do a platter swap video, but uh, sadly I do need <laughs> an amount of drives actually working, so I'll probably have to do it with uh, some cheaper server gear rather than consumer stuff because, uh, you know, it's very helpful for them to be working. I don't quite have a recommended way of undoing the central hub. I feel like the last time I've done these, it was a different arrangement, so maybe I've not torn apart Western digital drives before. I've opened them and moved the arm over, destroying many, many sectors, but I don't think I've actually done a complete teardown on them. And everything is very nice, excellent feeling metal. So I have no idea what the scrap value of any things like these are, but 
comparing the individual platters here, thickness is virtually identical, physical size comparison, they are basically identical. Overall, uh, I wonder if these are compatible enough you could swap them. Different interfaces, I wonder if IDE or so on have a different allocation type or sectors that the drive would need to know in the first place, but otherwise, well, maybe at some point I will. Right, we're just going to do this the lazy way. All right. And of course, we are down to the dangerous part of removing the magnet here. Quite fun to play with there. One thing I didn't say is that the on the head assembly, so we've got the large voice coil thing here that you pass magnetic current through and it moves along the magnet. Uh, comparing here, you see these heads are destroyed, being all stuck together like that. The flex cables are only different in that, oh, I didn't realize there's actually logic on board with the three head being a slightly larger silicon die and there being some sort of different interface adapting all of these parts here. We'll have to look at that on macro, it's quite interesting. But yeah, so they're slightly different, but then otherwise the flex assembly heading over to the talk to the actual controller is identical from what I can tell besides the, the print date. So we're back on our case for a basically identical internals, just different interface board. That magnet once again giving us trouble there. Remove our screw, and luckily because it's new metal on one side, this is actually not too difficult to lift out, and gravity will probably do it for me if I take that rubber part out. Gravity would almost do it for me if it wasn't for the fact that, oh yes, it's a magnet, we can just use the magnet. All right, let's make a collection of slightly dangerous magnets here. No, they are slightly different, 3D TC. Might must have either something to do with the year or the amount of power required to drive a head with more parts. Don't quite know. Let's take out the logic board here. And comes off just like sticky foam once again. Quite a big difference there. Of course, we are talking about an older interface. We can see that they've opted to remove this fuse, I assume it's there. Entirely different chips. Oh, actually, that's very similar. The ST Smooth, which must be the motor driver, is very similar, although the packages look like they're slightly different sizes. Actually, that might just be me. Uh, it's a 3.0 versus a 2.2, so slightly different model numbers. The switch is identical. Again, they're missing the fuse or similar device there, precision resistor or something like that. Uh, this one requires two drivers, very similar main driver. It basically went from QFP to uh, some sort of BGA type package there. Very similar there. This might just be the same controller type, and this might be a breakout for IDE. Hard to tell. We'll look it up. Again, you know, this is the same mass-produced part that they use. It's actually a Foxconn brand. This is not a Foxconn brand. Uh, same similar piece there that goes on the actual board. Feels like I could just snap it right off. Otherwise, they're fairly similar. It would be interesting also to know if you could swap driver boards just to change the whole interface there. If you had more similar platter layouts and such uh, is what I mean. Uh, obviously there might be quite a big difference here between these two drives being different platter layouts but on um, much more similar models I wonder if just switching the driver board would work or if the layout is some sort of calibration data or if it just reads from the drive and figures it out. Interesting thoughts and questions. Again, the motor, I don't know if there's quite an easy way to take it out on this model. We can see that how they've done the flex has changed slightly. It's similar there, but how it breaks out onto the actual motor has changed. I feel like maybe I did just punch it out before from the back. So I might have clamped it and pressed on through, uh, which I don't have here. And I forget what this little part down here is, but it might be, might actually be desiccant balls. So I might not want to lift this up. Well, probably shouldn't have broken into that. Who knows what that is? 
I thought would have been desiccant, but who quite knows? Possibly avoid messing with that, depending upon what it is.